Mayhem Miller's back in a jam. Oh, I don't want this for him. I don't want this for him. Mayhem's been very open to discuss with us. There's some mental stuff going on, right? I couldn't remember if it was anxiety or depression, but he discussed this. He discussed it with Adam Hunter. They were doing a podcast together. He's been very open that he, he, he deals with some stuff. He has these voices in his head. He keeps getting in the same jam. And I, I don't want to defend that behavior. I'm attempting to distance myself from that behavior, but I, I'm also attempting to share with you, this is not just a character from our community. This is a human being. And when I see what's going on with Mayhem, I've only been given one piece of parent advice from my father-in-law ever. He only gave me one piece of parenting advice for his grandchildren. My, uh, he said, Chael, you keep them going. You keep them going. Whatever it is they do, whatever it is that their focus and their energy, their hobby, their sport, whatever it is that they do, you keep them going. Do not base it on, did they reach their goals? Okay, great. It's, it's okay to move on. Do not base it on, they failed to reach their goals. And this is going to be an unproductive use of your time. No, you keep them going. You keep the purpose. You keep the drive. You keep the support system. And you have somewhere to go burn off your energy each day. Mayhem's got a lot of energy. And those are just my thoughts. I, I want to see him get back. I want to see him go back into the gym. A lot of people like him. A lot of people want him around. I hear that he's a fantastic. I've heard this from a number of people. Adam Hunter is one of them. Mayhem Miller is a fantastic coach around kids. And there, I do know a couple of people like that. Where the grown men, but they can't, they can't get along with other grown adults. But boy, they're good with kids. You know anyone like that? And I hear that Mayhem has this. I want Mayhem to take the advice that my father-in-law gave me, which is keep going. Just keep going. Keep going to that practice room. Keep giving back. I don't know if I'm going to get my way. I have a tie-in to Mayhem, which is just that my, my first professional fight ever was against Mayhem. And I had done a couple of amateur fights. It wasn't my first time in the ring, but in many ways it is. Your first pro fight in many ways is your first time. And we went and did an event at, I might be saying this wrong, Saboba? Saboba Casino in California? My mother loves to tell this story. And I think I, I, I she's actually in the other room. I should have her up here and, and, and tell you guys this. But her and my father come to the fight. So... You know, they get tickets and they wait in line and it's in a different state. They've got to fly in and get a hotel and get transportation. It was my, my pro debut. And so when they get there, they have to go through a metal detector and it just slows everything. I mean, it, the show ends up starting 50 minutes late, just trying to get the audience seated because of the level of security. And you actually had to go through the detectors and clean out your pockets and go back through and get one. All right, you guys know what a metal detector is. So I fight mayhem. And there's a heavyweight tournament going on around us. And it's a four-man tournament, but who, whoever wins it or even comes in second is going to have to fight twice in one night. That was very normal back then. Three fights in a night, eight-man tournaments, was still normal in this time frame. So it was pre-commission. So we're out there fighting. And the cage that we were in, you know how you'll see the UFC cage? And it's black. It's black because that's uh, that's they dipped it. That's what that's called. You you dip that, you coat that in plastic. You have chain link fence, you dip it in plastic. It puts this nice rubber. If you were to rub your face against it, it would be just as smooth as can be. This had a black fence. It was not dipped in rubber. It was spray painted. It was galvanized metal that was spray painted black. Now, that's very relevant because in that heavyweight tournament that I told you about, my teammate went on to be my coach. Curtis Crawford fought. Curtis rubbed his finger up against the fence. He just either in a fight. He brushes up against the fence. It slices his finger. We had to put four stitches. His bone was showing. We had to put four stitches in it, and we couldn't do it for another two hours because he now is in the finals and has to go out and fight Aaron Brink. So... The cage had some problems, but this wasn't uh, this wasn't abnormal back then. Now stay with me because when Mayhem and I fight, I hit him with a double leg, double leg takedown. You know where you pick a guy up and you kind of dry, try to drive him down. He disappears. I can't see him. Like if, if you're in the audience in the front row where my mother was, you see me, but you no longer see my opponent. The Undertaker had a match like this in WWE where the ring gave way, 
That happened when Mayhem and I fight. The ring broke and he's now gone. My mom can't see him. He's in a hole. So he breaks through the plywood and all they have is the actual tarp. So the promoter yells out to the audience while they're trying to fix the case. So now I'm in my corner. Mayhem's in his corner. He climbs out of the hole. He's over here. I'm over here. The promoter yells out to the audience, does anyone have a knife? 200 people's hands go up. Now, the irony of that is the fact that the show was delayed because everybody allegedly went through a wanding and a metal detector process just so that nobody had a knife. It was a whole biker gang that was there. And that was very big in MMA at the time. Everybody thought they were going to be trouble. They, they were just good fans. They all had a knife. They fixed, they work on the cage. So I'm in my spot. Dan Henderson, Randy Couture, my coaches. We're kind of catching our breath. Tito is cornering Mayhem. And we've got this break. Promoter comes in, turns out he couldn't fix the cage. He didn't have the tools. He didn't have the plywood. He couldn't fix the cage. So as he walks by us, he, he yells. He just kind of yells. I'm in this loud, crowded place. I'm in the middle of a fight. He yells, we couldn't fix it. Stay out of that area. Well, he had pulled the tarp tight. So wherever this hole is, is now, I can't see it. I don't remember where we were. I don't have the foggiest idea what part of that cage we fell through. Not to mention, this isn't just a matter that Mayhem and I have to finish our contest. There's four fights left in the night. Good, big name fighters. Tiki Goshen was fighting. Rob McCullough was fighting. Aaron Brink and Curtis Crawford. These are just off the top of my head. I think AJ McKee, Antonio McKee was on this card. Okay. So I don't know where that hole is. And I remember just thinking to myself, it's, it's over there. Just stay, stay out of over there completely fine. Fight goes on. But this was, you know, you do combat with a guy. And then Mayhem and I ended up training. Dan Henderson brought Mayhem in. And they became training partners at Team Quest. So when I would go train with Dan, now I'm, you know, I'm sparring partners with Mayhem. I remember sparring with Mayhem one day. And I came from the Team Quest Portland gym. Very different philosophy. At Team Quest Portland, when it was sparring day, you did just that. You went and sparred. You worked out extremely controlled. Randy was the head of the gym. Randy was no, Randy could take a 145 pounder. And this is his, he's the sitting heavyweight champion of the world. He could take a 145 pounder who had no experience and Randy will return him to you just the same way as he found him. He was very much about control and never hurt anybody, but it was just the discipline of our entire gym. So I get out to Temecula, I'm sparring with mayhem, right? The bell goes off, ding, I'm moving around. Boom! Mayhem cracks me right in the nose, right in the face, but right in the nose. I put both hands down and look at him so that he could apologize. So that he could say, and that happens sometimes, even in the Portland gym, one gets away. Oh man, I'm sorry, you all right? I put my hands down so that he can apologize to me. Oh, he hits me again. This is how I find out. They, they fight at the Temecula. They don't spar at Dan's gym. We spar at Randy's gym. We fight apparently at Dan's gym. But I have this background with Mayhem. I've traveled the roads with him, and I've gone out socially with him, and I enjoy him. I've heard of this other side. I've read of the other side. I want to, I want to distance myself. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to defend. I don't fully know what happened there. But there is another side to him. If I could get my arms around him, if I could get my shot at him, I would only take one. But it would be to take Steve Smith's advice, which is keep him going. He has a drive, he has a skill, he has a purpose, he has a community, which is a support system. Get him there. Get him there every day. Burn that energy. When he comes home, he's now tired. Get up tomorrow, do it again. 